Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. I'm very glad also to be joined by June Rain of the MHRA and, and Chris Whitty. Our roadmap to freedom depends on the continued success of our vaccination programme, and so it's reasonable for people to want to be continually reassured, not only that our vaccines are safe and effective, but also that we have the supply that we need. So I want to address both points today, especially in the light of concerns you uh, may have heard in some other countries about the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. First, the Independent Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency has reviewed the evidence, as it does every week. They've confirmed that the benefits of the vaccine in preventing COVID far outweigh any risks, and people should continue to get their vaccine when asked to do so. And June will say a little bit more about that in a moment. It's also very important for our European friends that today the European Medicines Agency has come to a clear scientific conclusion, and I quote, this is a safe and effective vaccine. We also saw yesterday the evidence from Public Health England that a single dose of either vaccine provides 60% protection against getting COVID and reduces the chances of hospitalisation by 80% and the risk of death by 85%. So the Oxford jab is safe and the Pfizer jab is safe. The thing that isn't safe is catching COVID, which is why it's so important that we all get our jabs as soon as our turn comes. And as it happens, I'm getting mine tomorrow. And the center where I'm getting jabbed is currently using the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine for those receiving their first dose. And that is the one I'll be having. And let me also assure you, if you come forwards after receiving your letter. We have the jabs for you. We've always said uh, that in a vaccination program of this pace and this scale, some interruptions in supply are inevitable. And it is true that in the short term, we're receiving fewer vaccines than we had planned for a week ago. Uh, that is because of a delay in a shipment from the Serum Institute, uh, who are doing a Herculean job in producing vaccines in such large quantities. And because of a batch that we currently have in the UK that needs to be retested as part of our rigorous safety program. So as a result, we will receive slightly fewer vaccines in April than in March, but that is still more than we received in February. And the supply we do have will still enable us to hit the targets we have set. That means that by the 15th of April, we'll be able to offer a first dose to all of you who are over 50, as well as those under 50 who are clinically vulnerable. We will have the second doses that people need within the 12-week window, which means around 12 million people in April. And we will still offer a first dose to every adult by the end of July. So there is no change to the next steps of the roadmap. We've now vaccinated over 25 million people across our entire United Kingdom, more than the entire population of many countries, and our progress along the road to freedom continues unchecked. We remain on track to reclaim the things we love, to see our families and friends again, to return to our local pubs, our gyms and sports facilities, and uh, of course, our shops. Uh, all, of course, as long as the data continue to go in the right direction and we meet our four tests. And the way to ensure that this happens is to get that jab when your turn comes. So let's get the jab done. Thank you very much. I'm now going to hand to, to June Ray. Thank you, Prime Minister, and good afternoon. The MHRA has been carrying out robust safety vigilance in tandem with the COVID-19 vaccination program. Our role is to continually monitor safety during widespread use of a vaccine to confirm that they're performing as expected, to identify any new side effects that arise, and to ensure that the benefits continue to outweigh the risks. We've been able to gather a large amount of data 
on the safety profile of the available vaccines and have done a rigorous scientific review of all the available data with regards to suspected blood clots. Our review, alongside the critical assessment of leading independent scientists in the Commission on Human Medicines, shows that there is no difference that blood clots in veins are occurring more than would be expected in the absence of vaccination for either vaccine. The public can have every confidence in the thoroughness of our review. We have also received five reports of a different, a rare form of blood clot in the cerebral sinuses, cerebral sinus vein thrombosis, or CSVT, occurring together with lowered blood platelets shortly after vaccination with the COVID-19 vaccine AstraZeneca. This type of blood clot can rarely occur naturally in unvaccinated people as well as in people with COVID-19 disease. A further review of these events is ongoing, but a causal relationship with the vaccine has not yet been established. And the rate of occurrence of these CSVT events among the 11 million people vaccinated is extremely rare. While we continue to investigate these cases as a precautionary measure, we would advise anyone with a headache that lasts more than four days after vaccination or bruising beyond the site of vaccination after a few days to seek medical attention. And we will communicate further on the outcome of this further review when it's complete. The MHRA assessed this data alongside the benefits of the vaccine in preventing COVID-19 with its associated risk of hospitalisation and death, and determined that the benefits firmly remain to outweigh the risks. So you should continue to receive your vaccine when you get the call or the second dose as soon as you're contacted. And I want to end by expressing our sincere gratitude to those who have sent reports to the MHRA and remind everyone that you can report and you should report all suspected side effects to COVID-19 vaccines through the coronavirus yellow card scheme. Thank you, Prime Minister. Thank you very much, June. Uh, let's go to Chris, you have anything to add to that? Thank you very much. Let's go to, let's go to Jane from Buckinghamshire. Good afternoon. Are the UK able to provide stats to prove that the AstraZeneca vaccine is safe and therefore alleviate the current fears of blood clots in the EU? Thank you. Thanks, Jane. I'm, I'm going to pass that straight back to, 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 to June and then to, to Chris. Yes, we can. We're committed to transparency. We publish every week all the suspected adverse drug reaction reports that we receive, and our report includes further information on any trends, and it will certainly communicate all the data and the stats around the particular issue of blood clots. Thank you. Uh, I mean, the thing I'd add to uh, what Dr. Raines just said uh, is firstly that all of medicine is about saying, look, what are the potential risks of the treatment? And everything that you take, every drug, every vaccine, every operation has going to have, have some risks, often very small, including drugs that people are very used to, like aspirin. So, for example, that can cause uh, clotting, uh, sorry, bleeding, that can cause a whole variety of problems. Uh, and yet we all would see that as a, a normal uh, drug that people would just have in their, uh, their bathroom cabinet. So all drugs have some uh, side effects that are rare. The question is, are the benefits big enough to justify that? And what we have here, what Dr. Rain has laid out, is an incredibly small potential risk, and even this is a potential risk, not one that is certain. So five people. Our politicians have failed us. They locked down our cities. They decimated our economy. They failed to protect our elderly. Cool out of the 11 uh, million that have been given the vaccine in the UK so far, against the really very substantial protection that these vaccines give and that the AZ vaccine, as well as the Pfizer vaccine, give to people against this really common disease. And I think it's important to remind people 
that at this point in time, uh, we're still in a situation where the, uh, the, uh, the Office for National Statistics uh, think that one in 270 people uh, have got COVID. This is still a common disease, and it is a very dangerous disease for many people. People dying, uh, people getting significant blood clotting problems, that's one of the risks of COVID, uh, people having long-term uh, physical and mental effects from COVID. So this is a very significant disease that is very common with a very effective uh, vaccine, and two vaccines in the case of AZ and Pfizer, and real uh, issues that we always have to think about with all drugs, but they are so much smaller than the benefits of getting the vaccine. So it's, the risk benefit is really strongly in favor of getting vaccine, vaccinated, uh, as the MHRA have said today, and as the EMA, the excellent uh, European Medicine Safety Agency has also said today. So this is a universal view. It's also the view of the World Health Organization, WHO. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Barry from Burton on Trent. Barry asks, in the light of the European President, uh, the European Commission President, threatening to block the export of vaccines, how will this affect the general public who are waiting for the second dose of the Pfizer vaccine, which is which is produced in, in Belgium? Uh, well, uh, Barry, thank you very much. Uh, I think that people should be uh, under uh, no uh, anxiety or no misapprehensions about that. We will get a, get on and deliver all the, the second doses of the of the Pfizer, and um, it's, it's very important to stress whatever you uh, may hear about uh, the pressures that different countries are, are under to uh, deliver vaccines for their for their public. Um, this is these vaccines are a, a multinational effort. They're produced as the result of international cooperation, and I want to stress that we in the UK uh, will continue to. Uh, to to view it in that spirit, and to, uh, we don't have any uh, bans on uh, on exporting stuff, and we'll continue to cooperate with our with our European friends.